Well, back in 2015, I had the pleasure and the honour to be involved with the World Driving Championship, which was staged in New South Wales. A number of the great drivers from the world, around the world participated, Tim Tietrick, J.D. Jamison, Mika Force. And on the reserves bench on that particular occasion was an emerging star from Queensland in Pete McMullen. I'm pleased to say I'm joined by Peter now. We'll have a little bit of a chat about his experience. Well, Pete, great to see you at Clubman Angle, just going back five years since that World Driving Championship. Yeah, time flies, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, it was a you know, great memory for myself. It was something um, I was still quite young at the time, and it was a great sort of achievement to be able to, um, or, or an honour to be able to sort of travel around with those guys and um, you know, still keep in touch with a few of them today. So it's a, um, yeah, it was a real privilege to be able to be associated with them sort of people. Pete, you were there on the reserve bench in case any of them did have uh, a problem and couldn't fulfil their particular engagements. Being involved with those drivers, as I mentioned, and a lot more, Pierre Veracris, who was the defending world driving champion, it was a wonderful experience. Yeah, you know, even when you sort of start thinking like uh, Dexter won, uh, Dexter Dunn, he, uh, he won that uh, championship and you know, I think I look what he's sort of doing now, he's, um, you know, he's going to be the world's, world's leading driver and um, it's scary to sort of look at his stats. About that particular trip, Pete, what was the most valuable lesson you learnt from being involved with those drivers virtually 24-7? Yeah, um, you know, I watched them guys a lot before I sort of, you know, met them and I used to watch a lot of American racing, so I uh, always sort of watched them and, but to be up close and sort of just watch how they handle horses and, um, you know, just how relaxed they are and, and their composure is just sort of faultless. And what about as far as being involved with them on a social basis? There was a lot of fun to be had. Yeah, it certainly was, um, you know, but they were all just top guys and it was just a great experience. I think one of the most enlightening things I learned from that particular trip, Peter, was at Wagga, when they weren't driving horses that were renowned as being brilliant, but the way they handled the Wagga track and those horses was just uh, something I'll never forget. Yeah, I'm sure it was pretty different for a few of them guys. They wouldn't have probably been to a track like that before, and they all took it in their stride, but that's probably just a credit to their skills. Well, let's fast forward now. We're 2021, Pete. You've got a very strong team back home, along with your partner, Chantel Turpin. How many horses have you got in work? Yeah, um, along with my wife, um, she's also the trainer. We train about 40 horses. Um, you know, the team's ticking along really good. We've got a, you know, really, really strong team of horses, and um, you know, they're all going quite well. And you must be pleased with your own performances. Yeah, um, you know, obviously driving side's going really good, and um, but yeah, really enjoy training with my wife, and um, it's just in a very enjoyable, enjoyable uh, sort of family orientated sort of thing to do. Peter, as the Carnival of Miracles continues to move on, will we be seeing you here on a regular basis? I suppose they'll depend on how we go tonight. And how you've been handling the COVID situation up in Queensland? <laughs> well, I think probably as good as anyone can handle it, but we've been very lucky up in Queensland. Um, not sure if it's the warmer weather or what it is, but we've been pretty lucky with COVID. It sort of hasn't hit Queensland as bad as other states. Is there a particular horse from the stable, Pete, we should be keeping an eye on? Probably no particular one horse. Like, um, you know, we've just got a big bunch of sort of young horses coming through and they're all starting to sort of grow into really nice sort of race horses and... Um, you know, everywhere from horses like Will the Wizard, Blacks of Dance, um, you know, a nice three-year-old, big wheels. Uh, so, you know, they're horses that, you know, possibly could be competitive during the carnival down here, but uh, just have to wait and see what happens tonight. And Pete, in what's been very difficult times, as we mentioned, through the COVID period, great racing in Queensland during their carnival. Melbourne stage an outstanding one, and now we're back here. It's great for harness racing to see all the carnivals coming together so strongly. Yeah, I think Queensland gets underestimated a little bit. Um, our racing's super strong. Um, you know, I think people really sort of underestimate the quality of horses up there, and uh, you know, hopefully, we can sort of showcase it when we come down here. Well, Pete, great to catch up with you once again, and good luck throughout the carnival. Cheers, eh?